Hey everyone, John Lorton here. Welcome to another episode of Itchy Mysteries. Thank you so much for joining me. This episode being recorded for February 1st, 2018. Really excited to talk to you about today's Itchy Mystery. Uh, it's got some really big news happening for it as of about a week ago. We'll get to that by the end of the video. The film that we're talking about today is called Strong Island. And let's go ahead and get started with the IMDb summary. Examining the violent death of the filmmaker's brother and the judicial system that allowed his killer to go free, this documentary interrogates murderous fear and racialized perception and reimagines the wreckage in Catastrophe's wake, challenging us to change. That word in particular, challenging, I think is really important when we're talking about this film. Uh, the filmmaker's name is Yancey Ford. Uh, Yancey was born as a woman and has since transitioned. He now identifies as a male. Um, and he did a fantastic job with this film. It's strange because it's not very often that I find a documentary that so clearly tells you someone's perspective, especially when a filmmaker includes themselves in their own product, but still gives you all the information to come to your own conclusion. It's, it's kind of a rare thing. A lot of the times, the documentaries that I'm, I'm reviewing here on the channel have a very specific message they're trying to convey to you. Sometimes they are really ham-fisted about it, and it's just it, it turns into a bit of a mess when you're watching it and trying to be objective about the facts. Here, we have a really strange situation because you have the filmmaker himself a character in this piece that is being very honest and strong about what he believes went wrong with his brother's murder and the uh, prosecution or the lack of prosecution around that. But there's so much information presented that I actually came out with a different feeling about the outcome than the filmmaker did. And that really speaks to the strength of this piece. I think that is an amazing thing when people are able to present that much information and say, hey, this is my opinion about it here, but here is all the information I gathered so you can consider it you know, any which way that you want to. Um, this film really touches on so many themes. It touches on family, of course, that I think we can all identify with. It, it touches on the challenges of the African-American community, particularly through the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s a bit. Uh, it's made a little bit of history. I don't want to spoil it. We'll talk about it at the end um, in terms of something that happened just last week. Another teaser for you guys. I'm just, I'm really excited to see uh, some good things happening from this film because I think it really deserves it. So what was so great about this film? Um, I have never seen a film where I felt like they had so little to work with and they turned it into so much. Basically, uh, Yancey's mother is really the heart of this film. And she is an amazing interview. She is extremely open. And I think that's another part of the genius in how this film was produced. You have a mother speaking to her own child. So when she's going to communicate with her child, she's going to do that in a very intimate and open way. And that's what we see. It's almost like we're, you know, we're a fly on the wall and we're catching this conversation between these two people that love each other. Uh, her mother just has an amazing voice, an amazing way of speaking. I just, I really enjoyed the presence of Yancey's mother throughout this, this documentary. Uh, and in an interesting way, uh, Yancey kind of develops and shows us a lot of the challenges that uh, Yancey's parents had in terms of being African Americans and trying to find their place uh, in a community and trying to find their their own happiness. And in terms of highlighting the differences and the challenges that they face, there's also this subtext of how we're all the same. You know, when they're talking about the type of media they consume and the types of things that they did and how they would go out, it really just. It's, it's super interesting to me that you can have dialogue that is sending you in this direction, but then there's other elements of the story that are taking that direction and going, but wait, you, you can also go this, this way with it. It is extremely, extremely rare, and I haven't quite seen anything like it before. Mm -hmm. um, quite honestly, 
a film hasn't touched me like this since Dear Zachary, which if I remember right, was my favorite movie of 2016 of all the movies that I had reviewed in that year. And I'd be very surprised if we don't see um, this film come up on my top 10 list at the end of 2018. But um, back to the film. So there's something very interesting about the pacing here where there's a lot of room in this film for you to just kind of digest what's going on. There's pauses, there's quiet spots. And while in some cases, some people might go, wow, that, that kind of sounds boring. What you have that works with it is an amazing director of photography. And I just got to search his name, Alan Jacobson who did an amazing job. And once again, back to that point I made about making so much out of so little, there is little more than the family home that is being filmed here. But the way that it's being filmed, the way that the people are being captured in it, um, I don't know if they took time to kind of choose the items or, that were in the background, but there's this kind of vibrance about the color palette. I mean, you have Yancey's mother talking in a kitchen, basically in front of her sink, but for some reason, this beautiful red teapot kind of stands out and these green curtains. And there's even certain shots that are framed where her mother is kind of almost like being backlit by these beautiful green curtains. It's really... I don't know, just it's visually captivating to see such simple things that are being captured by a director of photography with an expert eye. And uh, I, I was blown away by the photography in the, by the photography in this film. Uh, it is subtly beautiful, I think is the best way I can say it. Outside of that, the music completely just works so well with this film. There were moments where, I, I felt like my nerves kind of ratcheting up and then I would really zone in and I go, oh, wow, there's a little bit of music that's actually playing there that I wasn't really paying attention to. And it's this chord that's kind of this off key note. Um, just really, it's strange because I, I see so many films and I see so many people try to do these things where they might want to give you a bit of an emotional reaction. So they try to put music in and it's just this overdone, super obvious thing that kind of pulls me out of the film. And in this case, it was drawing me in more because I was wondering, why am I being affected like this? What's actually going on here? What else am I noticing about this moment that seems relatively quiet, but I've got this kind of, you know, mounting tension that's going on through this. Um, and then, of course, you have the story uh, about a young African-American man being shot um, some injustices that m may have happened around that. And like I said, the film kind of leaves it up to you to really decide if, if you believe that it is unjust or not. But the truth of the emotional response that the family had, you can't deny. It's just completely intact. It is raw. You're, you are seeing interviews with the actual people affected by this. You are seeing kind of how the family changes through that loss uh, it's a it's a great case study into families that are dealing with a lost loved one if they're lost if in terms of them being a missing person or if they've been murdered or even if they've just died. It's just a wonderful study in terms of kind of the grieving process. Um, now, typically when I see a film like this and the filmmaker includes themselves in it, I get kind of this, uh-oh, you know, it, it just, it seems like I see it go wrong so many times. And I have to say, Yancey does a very good job for 80 to 90% of this film of not allowing the focus to shift too much on him and his emotional response. In most cases, it is completely appropriate. There is maybe one scene where I felt like this might be going just a little bit too far for me personally. Um, maybe that was a private moment that didn't have to be filmed, but literally it was one scene. Everything else is a very good balance. It weaves together with this it's a heart-wrenching story that is so beautifully told. That's that's kind of the best way that I can put it to you guys. I've never come out of a film like this and had such good feelings about a somewhat dark event, but it's just the way that this is structured. It's being told by an expert storyteller, and it's also kind of a love letter, um, obviously, from Yancey to his family. And you just, you can't deny it. There's so much quality that you see just oozing out of this piece every which way. You cannot deny that this is a love letter. Um, and it's just so open. It's, it's really, really touching. So in case you guys couldn't tell, I can't recommend it enough. 
Yancey's mother, just a wonderful woman to be able to spend some time with like that. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. A bunch of beautiful family photos. The way that they're presented is really interesting. Kind of this top-down view on a table while they're being placed there, kind of side by side. Um, just simple. It's just really simply and tastefully done. And I really enjoyed the heck out of it. So what's the big news I keep teasing you about with this film? As of a week ago, there was a new announcement. Yancey Ford, the director of the documentary Strong Island and a trans man, became the first transgender filmmaker nominated for an Oscar. His film, a Netflix release about Ford's investigation into his brother's 1992 murder, was nominated for Best Documentary. I think that is amazing. Uh, now, that is not the first time that a transgender person has been nominated uh, for an Oscar per se, but specifically a transgender filmmaker and for one of the big Oscars. I mean, we're talking best documentary there. So uh, I truly hope that this film makes a good run at it. I haven't really seen all the competition, so I can't say what you know my opinion is on that. But um, it is certainly a very touching... It's, it's kind of a love letter to Yancey's family, this film, altogether, and I really appreciate that. And unfortunately, there's no way that Yancey's brother can send a message to him and say, you know, what, a, what an amazing job you did with this. I'm, I'm proud of you. Uh, I'm sure he would if he could. But in some way, this nomination sure seems like it could be a message to Yancey uh, about that. So so what do I rate this film? Uh, for me, it is a 9 out of 10. And I'm going against the grain a little bit because on IMDb right now, it's only rating a 6.5. Kind of don't get that. Um, this has already got some special awards and uh, a lot going for it. Uh, I'm not sure why it's so low, maybe because there's a little bit of a controversial conversation going on in this film. Um, but for me, it's a nine out of 10. Like I said earlier, I'd be very surprised if this doesn't wind up on my top 10 list at the end of 2018. But I hope that you will, if this sounds interesting to you, jump on Netflix. Please spend some time checking out Strong Island. I think many of you out there would appreciate it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today on Itchy Mysteries. I hope to see you back here on the Lord and Arch channel tomorrow. Always got new stuff for you. I'll see you there.